welcome to that weekend feeling with Darren Mann. That weekend feeling once again brought to you by the Weekend Post and the Daily Dispatch Weekend Edition. It's recorded at the Radioactive Productions and Publishing Studios in Newton Park, Kabecha. For more on these and other stories, go to dispatchlive.co.za and heraldlive.co.za. That weekend feeling today is catching up with Gary Kukumur. He represents WESA, Wildlife and Environmental Society of South Africa. Just a few days ago, they put out a position statement regarding the proposed seismic activity in South African coastal waters, particularly the Wild Coast area. Gary, thank you for joining us. There's a lot to talk about. It's one of the hot button issues as far as the environment goes at the moment. Absolutely, Darren. Thank you. And thank you to your listeners. And uh, thank you for inviting me onto the show. And absolutely, it's, uh, it's one of those key issues that, that uh, just demonstrates the, the disparity in, in, in how we're approaching things. Gary, have we jumped on this too late? The initial application was made as far back as 2013. Yeah, look, I mean, to, to be clear, seismic uh, surveying has been happening for, for many, many years. This is not the first seismic survey, and, uh, and also there are two. So there's one on the wild coast, which is where the public attention is focused at the moment. But there's another one, and a bigger one, off our own coast. Uh, so quite close into Algoa Bay that stretches all the way to just off Plettenberg Bay. Uh, and that's a far bigger one and an exercise that's meant to happen in January. So, so there's two exercises underway at the moment, but, it, but these are not new activities. This, this technology has been around for some time. Um, and, and our coast has been surveyed by this. Um, there was one recently in 2018. Uh, and you, if you chat to the squid uh, fishermen, they believe that their catches were much lower because of that. Uh, and then, you know, the, we've had a, a number of whale and dolphin beachings, which seem to be associated with the, with the same kind of activity. So WESA is unreservedly opposed to 3D seismic surveys for oil and gas, no matter where they might be, around Algoa Bay or off the wild coast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and just to be clear why that is, it's not, you know, this is not tree-hugging stuff. Uh, you know, our argument is... is uh, is a combination of two things. One is sustainable development, and the other one is collective stewardship. Uh, and what we're saying is that the wild coast particularly is a very uh, sensitive ecosystem uh, and an ecosystem that drives a lot of the ocean, uh, the, the, the stuff that happens within the oceans, you know. So, so there's a lot of spawning that takes place there. The, the Algolis current runs through it um, and we have a number of marine, what we call marine protected areas that are there. And marine protected areas are there for a reason, because of the nature of the reefs and the nature of the species and that. Uh, and off our own coasts, we have, the, uh, have almost a similar situation. So it's a very, very rich ecosystem that's there. And that rich ecosystem is necessary to the ocean's health. Uh, and the seismic stuff uh, is under-researched, uh, but the research that we have done so far, no, we know that it, it, it impacts the entire ecosystem. So, so from zooplankton through to whales, um, you know, so the, the research that has been done, it demonstrates quite clearly that it impacts zooplankton. Uh, and then obviously because whales and, and other cetaceans uh, are, are impacted by sound, you, you create this this sort of explosion of sound over a five-month period uh, that is going to change behavior of those animals. This might be a good idea to give us an explanation of exactly what a seismic survey entails. Yeah, so in essence, it's three ships. Uh, the, one, the main ship is the seismic boat. What it does is it trails behind it uh, what they call arrays, which are basically rows of air guns, and an air gun then gives off a uh, a sonic boom, um, very much like an explosion. That creates a sound wave. That sound wave then penetrates the ocean floor and is then picked up by hydro phones that also trail behind the same boat. And that creates a 3D image of the, the seabed and the rock below that, which then allows them to identify potential sites for further exploration. So where they can go and drill for oil or gas because the rock has a certain signature and you pick up that signature through the sonic boom. But just to understand it, you know, so, so what you have is you have in one row, you have about 36 air guns 
uh, you have about three, three uh, rows of those air guns. So in total, you're looking at about 100, 108 air guns and they fire every 18.75 meters, you know, so it's, uh, uh, it's predetermined and that's generally between five, five to 10 seconds. So, so every five to 10 seconds, you have 108 blasts that are going off. So I, I did a quick calculation. These, these things uh, operate 24 seven. So in a day, you're looking at over 700,000 explosions that are taking place. Um, and you, you know, your C is a sound, uh, sound capture. Uh, sound is the primary sense in the C, not, not like land, which where light is the primary thing. So all your sea creatures and animals are based, uh, have evolved around sound as the key thing, and and sound carries very far in the in the sea. So, so you have this, um, you know, and and so the, the the oil and gas scientists are saying, look, just the single blast, you know, it has to be next to your ear to really create a problem and that kind of stuff. And we're saying, yes, maybe that is the case, but the but the cumulative effect of all of this over five months period. Mm means that you will decimate the reefs and you'll drive away animals, uh, you know, so the sea creatures from those areas. Now, the South African government has rubber stamped this, uh, despite the fact that we as a country are a signatory to the Paris Climate Agreement, COP26, and as a member of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. How is it possible that we've aligned ourselves with organizations like that and yet okayed this activity? Well, it is this sort of schizophrenic arrangement we have with development. Um, so on the one hand, we, we claim to be environmentally uh, progressive, uh, but on the other hand, we are driven by particularly resource extraction and mining. You know, the South Africa is founded on mining, and all we've now done is extended this into the sea. Um, and so, the, so how it happened technically is that the, this particular kind of exploration falls under the ambit of the Department of Mineral Affairs, uh, Mineral Resources and Energy, and they, under their petroleum agency, issue licenses for exploration, and, and they don't require a full uh, environmental authorization as you would with any other development. All they require is an environmental plan. And that environmental plan is being done for the Transcar one, and so public can't input into it. But the, the, one, the environmental plan for the other seismic server off our coast is still underway. So public still have the opportunity to give input into it up until Monday, this coming Monday, the 29th. Um, but in, in essence, the, the plan is, is, is the mop-up, is what happens afterwards. The, the, you know, and what WESA is saying is, guys, we, we have to understand the impact of this activity before we do the activity, not after we do the activity. And you haven't done enough to understand the full impact of that. You, you have to go and do proper research, proper understanding. You have to involve the scientists in this thing, and you have to understand the cumulative effect, not just the isolated one gun firing thing. You know, and, uh, and because our economic exclusion zone is such a rich biodiverse environment, once we destroy that, we de we destroy a resource for future generations, um, and, and you know, just in the interest of of oil and gas, mm. which is not necessary in itself, you know, and, and 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 so it's not just a look, you know, we don't want to kill sea creatures. It's also that we have alternatives to oil and gas. Uh, and we are not driving that to the extent that we could in South Africa. Why, you know, that's the question. You know, so why are we investing all of this energy? Excuse the pun in in oil and gas extraction that that might damage our future sustainability for something that is not actually necessary uh, that that doesn't make sense to us now opposition to these moves by shell and their related partners are growing daily celebrities are coming out organizations are coming out all opposed to this seismic activity off the wild coast and off algoa bay as well as you've pointed out is that likely to have any effect? Are there legal challenges being mounted? Is there any partnership that WESA has entered into that might bring about change? Yeah, so at a, at a local level, what we've done in the Bay is we've formed with a bunch of other environmental organizations like Greenpeace, uh, like Earth Life Africa, like Extinction Rebellion, uh, uh, Tasement Alliance and, uh, and others, uh, a, a local coalition that we call um, Algoa Bay Ocean um, uh, stewards. 
And what we're looking at is then coordinating protest action and input into the process uh, around, uh, around the seismic studies, both off Transkai Coast and, and off our own coast. Uh, so that's what we're doing at a local level. There is a legal challenge currently underway to the Transkai one, uh, and we're, we're, we're not driving it, but we're in discussion with the lawyers that are driving it. Uh, and there are other challenges that are taking place. You know, so the, so the public response to this is not just to hold up a poster and to go into social media. That is a key part of it. But the other part is to go to the, there's a petition, an online petition, sign the petition. Even though it doesn't have legal standing, it gives an indication to government of just the, the public um, uh, furor around this issue. So, you, so that's one thing that you can do. Then you can do a poster and come join us is a, we're going to do a solidarity protest on the 5th of December, Sunday the 5th of December at 9 o'clock. We'll gather at, at Hobie um, or Shark Short, Rock Pier and then just, uh, just create a sort of oil slick, slick around the, around the, uh, the coast there. Um, and that will happen all throughout the coastline from Cape Town all the way up to the Transkai. Um, you know, so there, that's a key thing. And then we'll be monitoring to see whether the second permit is issued because that boat will be based in our bay. It will be based in Kabecha Harbor. Um, and we, we think that there are ways to pressurize that company. Uh, and I think ultimately there's also shareholder activity that takes place. There are demonstrations that have been planned in Netherlands and in London uh, to put pressure on Shell itself um, because the shareholders of those companies have to start uh, accounting for their behavior. They have to say, why are they driving this business that is ultimately destroying the planet that we live on? Uh, so, so, I mean, the argument of that we needed oil and gas, uh, it, it was valid in the 60s and 70s. It's no longer valid. We now have alternatives to that, you know? So, so we can drive that. So the economic argument uh, is based on a, on a false premise. I mean, it's just basic greed at this point in time, you know, that we want to make more money. Um, and, and Wes is not saying that it's wrong to make money. Wes is saying that it has to be within the environment of sustainable development, and it has to be within the context of collective, sustainable, uh, collective stewardship. The oil and gas companies, in terms of what they're doing, are as uh, complicit or uh, as responsible for the planet as every other individual is. What, what corporate citizenship are they displaying by doing this kind of thing. Now, the oil and gas companies often trot out surveys and scientific research to back up their position. Do you have scientists who are backing up your position? Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there, there's some stuff online and you'll find it on our Facebook page. Um, there's uh, clear scientific studies that have been done around the zooplankton and there's clear scientific studies that have been done around whales and that type of thing. But, but to be clear, this is an under-researched area and that's one of our key uh, key demands is is that uh, in the environmental development or in sustainable development there's this principle called the precautionary principle and that precautionary principle is is that if you don't know enough about the impact of what you're going to do don't do it research it first until you understand the full impact and then and then see whether it's a viable exercise but too often development happens in the case of, okay, this makes great sense, economic sense is going to make us money. And then we sit with a problem afterwards that is you, that you, you then have to rehabilitate and it's very difficult to rehabilitate ecosystems once they're, once they're destroyed. Um, you know, and so that, that's a key demand for us is research this thing better. Show us, show us the science that says in the Agalis current, this thing is not going to have an impact. Show us the science that says that these don't have an impact on the sea bent creatures, uh, the, on the coral reef structures, you know, because what we're seeing from the zooplankton is that the sound that this thing emits creates a, both a short term and long term damage. Uh, so, you know, what research is there around the long term damage of this? Thing? You know, and it's not for us to prove that it's bad, it's for the people that initiate this to, to prove that this is good, you know, the, the onus lies on the, the person doing the activity to show that this thing is a good activity. Um, and, and, the, and, and that's really what, what we're asking for at this point in time. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. We will watch with growing concern and with interest 
position statement put out by uh, WESA, the Wildlife and Environmental Society of South Africa, regarding seismic activity in South African coastal waters this week. That was the voice of Gary Kukumur. Thank you, Gary. Each one of us has a story to tell and a story to share. A story that deserves to be heard. A story that inspires, motivates, and gives people a reason to keep going. A story about our triumphs as individuals and as a team. A story about our humble beginnings and what the future holds for us. A story about our heritage and that which brings us together. It is these stories that connect us. The Herald. Whatever you live for, we live to tell that story for you. That was That Weekend Feeling with Darren Mann.